Hey folks, this is Kalani. Apologies for the super sporadic content lately. We've been super duper busy. More on that later. This video is to talk about Survival Hunter in Legion. And obviously in 7.0, which is just around the corner. Finally been announced, we've finally got an actual date. So, as with all of these videos, I'm going to go through the base abilities that we have, then the talents, and we'll have a look at the artifact and see how that affects how we play. Obviously, for just 7.0, we're only going to have the base abilities and talents. We don't have access to the artifact yet, so if you're interested in 7.0 specifically, the artifact comes later, just bear that in mind. So, what have we got to work with? We've got a lot of damage over time effects, starting with our traps. So, explosive trap. So you can't target where it goes, like with a normal trap, and it doesn't go to your target specifically. So it just goes a little bit in front of you. You do need to be close to your target to use it, and you throw it. And within five yards of where it lands, it will start dealing damage over time to everything it hits. Now we have some more damage over time in Lacerate. 35 focus, 10 second cooldown, 12 second duration. Basically keep it up all the time, and it's a standard damage over time effect. We also have Raptor Strike, which looks like a focus dump, but you probably don't want to use it too much, dependent on the talent path you choose, but it just deals a bit of physical damage. Flanking Strike is one of the big ones, 50 focus, 5.4 second cooldown, give or take, and it's a coordinated attack, so both you and your pet need to be in range of the target to be able to use this, and you both attack. And the extra damage down at the bottom basically is if you are being attacked, your pet will deal more damage and generate a lot of threats, so your pet is then being attacked. But if your pet is being attacked or you're not being attacked, then you will deal the 50% increased damage. And Flanking Strike has double the normal chance to trigger Hunting Companion, which is the mastery we probably should have started with, but let's have a quick look at your passives. We have two Hunting Companion, which is your mastery. Your pet's attacks have a 4.3% chance to grant you an additional charge of Mongoose Bite, and then Survivalists, after you kill a target, you and your pet gain 15% health over 15 seconds. So you can see it basically is just the master we have to worry about, which affects Mongoose Bite. And here we go. Mongoose Bite has three charges, takes about 11 seconds to get one charge back, and you basically deal a lot of damage. And every time you use it, you get Mongoose Fury, which stacks up to six times and lasts for 12 seconds. But consecutive attacks do not increase the duration, so you're kind of stuck with that 12 seconds and have to use as many Mongoose Bites as possible in that short duration. So there's a few ways to get these back. Obviously with the pet and your mastery, and Flanking Strike has double the chance, essentially, of your mastery to grant that Mongoose Charge. And then a lot of talents also work with Mongoose Charges as well, so bear that in mind when we're going through the talents. Apart from that, we have Harpoon, which is a standard charge effect, except you root your target in place for 3 seconds when you use it, 20 second cooldown. So that's cool. We do lose disengage for that. So we can go to a target, but we can no longer jump away from a target, which can be a little frustrating at times. We've got a standard melee interrupt, interrupt spell casting, and prevents it for 3 seconds on a 15 second cooldown. Nice and dandy. We also have Aspect of the Cheetah, which is a large movement speed increase for 3 seconds, and then a smaller increase for 9 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown, making that really, really annoying. Actually, you're going to have to be very careful where you use this in Raid Encounter specifically, because this is practically the only movement ability we have left, unless we're jumping towards a target with Harpoon. Apart from that, we have an AoE in Carve, 40 focus, a sweeping attack that strikes all enemies in front of you. choose three focus pretty quickly. We also have a ranged ability in Hatchet Toss which deals almost no damage, but hey, if we're at ranged and we need to do that extra 600 damage, we've got the choice in Hatchet Toss. Then we also have a cooldown in Aspect of the Eagle. Grants you and your pet 10% increased crit strike chance on all abilities and increases your chance to gain charges of Mongoose Bite by 100%. Whew, get that out there. Lasts for 10 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown. So basically you want to pop this and blow all of your Mongoose Bites and deal a lot of damage. You're basically guaranteed to keep your Mongoose Bite charges coming while you have that active. So. 
it's going to be a case of literally have your dots rolling, pop that, use all your mongoose charges, get some back, use those, and deal as much damage in that window as possible. Obviously, line up any trinkets we have, potions, that's going to be our huge damage window. And that's every two minutes. Now, apart from that, we get Wing Clip back, which is our standard slow, 50% for 15 seconds. We also have Flare, which you might think a little useless, but you will make use of it, trust me, especially in the Artifact quest, because you need to spam it, basically. Spoiler alert. We also have Freezing Trap, which is the standard Freezing Trap. You can target this one. Looks a bit different when you throw it, but... Either which way, it's going to freeze people, that's our CC, but we also have Tar Trap. Hurls a Tar Trap to the target location that creates an 8 yard radius pool of tar around itself for 30 seconds when the first enemy approaches. So this kind of replaces the Frost Patch Trap and will slow anybody that comes into it. Once again, we can target that one. Now, apart from that, we only have our pet utility and defensives. So, defensive, exhilaration, heals you for 30% and your pet for 100% of maximum health on a 2 minute cooldown. We also have Aspect of the Turtle, which kind of replaced Deterrence in that it deflects all attacks and reduces all damage you take by 30% for 8 seconds, and you can't attack. We only have one charge, and it's still on that 3 minute cooldown. As for pet utility, we can still call all our pets. We have our traps up here in the nice trap UI, and then all of our pet utilities such as the beast lawn, dismiss pet, feed pet, mend pet, and tame beast. Obviously mend pet still becomes revive pet when you don't have a pet active or it's dead. So that is pretty much everything to do with base abilities. Let's have a look at talents because this is really where things get interesting. A few of them are a little boring and I'll be honest there seems to be one pathway right now due to number tuning. Hopefully that's going to change but obviously with 7.0 literally right around the corner maybe not. So we have animal instincts, flanking strike, that's this one where both you and your pet attack grants you the instincts of your pet for seven seconds, providing one of the following combat enhancements. Now this is random, doesn't depend on your pet at all, it would seem. You can get 10% haste, 20% movement speed, or 10% mastery at random, which is kind of frustrating, because obviously if you get movement speed constantly, that's not helping your DPS at all. Throwing axes, toss three axes at an enemy, each dealing about 22 physical damage on a 13.5 second recharge, and it has two charges. So that's cool. We have Way of the Mokmathal. Raptor Strike also grants you Mokmathal Tactics, increasing your attack power by 3% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 4 times. Now, this is one of the frustrating ones because you don't necessarily want to use Raptor Strike a lot because it almost limits your use of Flanking Strike. And if you have a buff of essentially 12% attack power, that's such an incredible buff that you have to keep it up all the time or risk losing a stupid amount of DPS. And to do that, you need to use one Raptor Strike every 8 seconds without a way to actually generate focus for ourselves. That means a lot of waiting around because we also have Lacerate that we need to take care of and Flanking Strike when we can. And it eats up a lot of global cooldowns, but an incredibly powerful talent right now. We have Murder of Crows, summons a flock of crows to attack your target over the next 15 seconds. If the target dies while under attack, a Murder of Crows cooldown is reset. So no real change to Murder of Crows. Mortal Wounds, each time Lacerate deals damage, that's this one, which we'll be keeping up all the time. You have a 2% chance to gain a charge of Mongoose Bite, which kinda sounds like a joke, but 2% chance? That's kind of... I hope that gets a buff. Snake Hunter instantly grants you three charges of Mongoose Bite. So with this one, we can basically Mongoose Bite three times in a row, not have to worry about any RNG affecting our Mongoose Bites, use it three more times, and that is the maximum that Mongoose Bite can actually go to. So using that talent, we can very easily get to the maximum Mongoose Fury stacks to deal a lot of damage. Obviously, any Mongoose Bites on top of that are just bonus damage and is all gravy. We have Post Haste. Harpoon also frees you from all movement impairing effects and increases your movement speed by 60% for 8 seconds. So that's a nice bit of movement, especially if you're getting stuck in PvP. Fast Strider. Your ability Critical Strikes have a 10% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Harpoon. So if you're chasing a lot of people, you can happily Harpoon, Harpoon, Harpoon as long as you are critting. Dash increases the duration of Aspect of the Cheetah by 3 seconds. 
Caltrops scatters Caltrops in an area for 15 seconds, and enemies who step on Caltrops will bleed every one second and have 70% reduced movement speed. And that does replace Tar Trap. So happily make everybody bleed wherever you want to throw them. We also have Improved Traps, which reduces the cooldown of Freezing Trap by 15% and the cooldown of Explosive and Tar Trap by 50%, being very potent for that damage. Obviously, if we're keeping Explosive Trap up, the more we can use it, the better. Steel Trap hurls a Steel Trap to the target location that immobilizes the first enemy that approaches for 30 seconds and deals a massive amount of bleed damage over 30 seconds. Other damage may break the immobilization effect. Limit to 1 and the trap will exist for 1 minute on a 1 minute cooldown. That does replace your Freezing Trap. Once again we can throw it where we want and it will deal a massive amount of damage over those 30 seconds. It's a nice throw and forget, I suppose. You only need to reapply it every minute, which makes it maybe quite nice. We have Sticky Bomb, hurls a concussive grenade at your target which sticks to them and explodes after 3 seconds, knocking back all nearby enemies. It's probably not going to knock them back. They're quite static. Nice ticking effect there, and sadly does no damage. Ranger's Net. Hurls a net at the enemy, rooting the target for 3 seconds and then reducing movement speed by 50% rather for 15 seconds. Damage may break the effect and that does replace Wing Clip. So basically if you want to be a melee slower, you can take Wing Clip or if you want to be a ranged slower, you can take the Ranger's Net. And that Immobilize could actually work in your favour. That root for 3 seconds because you could throw the Ranger's Net and then throw Steel Trap on top, making sure they definitely catch that bleed effect. Then we also have Camouflage, hasn't really changed, but Camouflage is now obviously a talent on a 1 minute cooldown. Butchery replaces Carve and costs 40 focus, 13 second recharge, and you strike all enemies in a flurry of strikes, dealing physical damage to all of them. Let's have a gander, it's 3 charges. That actually looks like the Butcher's animation, which is pretty cool. So instead of just carving away, you turn it into a bit of a cooldown and deal a lot more damage. That's cool. Now we have Dragon's Fire Grenade, 30 second cooldown, and you hurl a Dragon's Fire Grenade at the target that explodes into flames, dealing fire damage over 8 seconds and reducing movement speed by 20%. The volatile flames on the target also scorch nearby enemies, making it incredibly potent for AoE. So you got single target damage, as well as it burning everything around you, or around it, rather probably around you too, being a melee hunter. Then we also have Serpent Sting. Targets hit by a Raptor Strike and Carve are also affected by Serpent Sting, dealing nature damage over time. So we've still got Serpent Sting, it's now a talent and it applies to your Raptor Strike, which again is the filler we don't necessarily want to use unless we take all of these talents affecting it, and it affects Carve, so you can happily apply that in a nice AoE situation. You can see how AoE is quite nice with Survival Hunter. Very potent, as you can happily use Dragon's Fire if you really want to, or you can go Serpent Sting, apply it to everything, and your Explosive Trap is already applying to everything anyway. Spitting Cobra. One minute cooldown summons a Spitting Cobra for 30 seconds that attacks your target for a little bit of nature damage every two seconds, and while the Cobra is active, you gain an extra three focus every one second. Huzzah! A way to actually generate focus! So we can happily attack a target, pop down the Spitting Cobra, and he'll happily just go to town. Dealing a really poor amount of damage. But hey, the focus is the important part, right? We also have Expert Trapper. This affects pretty much all of your traps and improves them in one way or another. So when Freezing Trap ends, movement speed of the victim and all nearby enemies is reduced by 50% for 4 seconds. Explosive Trap's damage to the triggering enemy is increased by 75%. Tar Trap enemies moving through the tar have a chance to be rooted in place. That's actually really cool. And Steel Trap also deals an immediate 44k bleed damage when triggered. 
also affects caltrops and increases their damage by 50%. So if you want to play around with your traps all day, every day, take Expert Trapper and they're just better traps. Then we also have Aspect of the Beast, which causes Flanking Strike to do something special, depending on your pet's specialization. So most of the time this is probably going to be the Ferocity one, where it adds another damage over time effect in the form of a bleed. And then obviously if you're soloing or doing something else like PvP, you can happily go for Tenacity, where they take less damage, or Cunning, where they will actually slow your enemy. So I imagine if you take a Cunning pet into PvP and take this ability, this talent, you can slow in so many different ways that I really don't think anybody is ever getting away from you. But that is the talent. I can tell you right now it seems to be Way of the Mokrathal, as well as Snake Hunter, Post Haste, Improved Traps, Camouflage or Ranger's Net, depending on what you want to do, Serpent Sting, and Expert Trapper. That seems to be the way to go, and as you can see, you will be using Raptor Strike quite a lot, which sadly means you actually don't use Flanking Strike all that much in the current talent build, simply due to the amount of damage that this build is doing with all the damage over time effects. We'll play around with it a little bit at the end, but for now let's have a look at the artifact, because the first ability you get with your artifact is Fury of the Eagle. Now that's this one here, if you've been looking and curious, and this is affected quite a bit by your Mongoose Bite and Mongoose Fury stacks, because this deals damage dependent on them, so damage is increased by the amount of stacks you have, but what it doesn't say is that it actually increases the duration of that buff. You remember that we said it was 12 seconds, and you can't really affect it, and every Mongoose Bite doesn't add additional time? Well, Fury of the Eagle does, so let's take Snake Hunter, let's get all six stacks of the Mongoose Bite, and then we can play around with the Fury of the Eagle, and I'll show you the buff duration. So keep track of it up there, we'll use Snake Hunter to get those charges back. So when we use it, we're going to be at three seconds, and it jumps to seven, which adds the four seconds that this will be channeling for, which is kind of curious. So as long as you catch that on the zero second mark, just before it falls off, you can always guarantee you will have all the stacks available for the complete duration of Fear of the Eagle, which is quite nice, but it's kind of disappointing that it doesn't say it anywhere in the tooltip. So let's have one more run of Fear of the Eagle so you can look at its animation. Sadly, it's not going to get changed at this point, I don't think. It's just the same old Fist of Fury animation with a little bit of green. Um, pretty much everybody had hoped that it was just a placeholder and get replaced, but we seem to be stuck with it for now, so let's have a look at the rest of the artifact. So for this we're going to look at the PvP realm, it's going to be a little busy, a little noisier over here, sorry for that, but we can play about with a fully powered up artifact. Now I'm going to go through all the passives and then we'll look at the special abilities that we have afterwards. So we start down here, Fury of the Eagle, that's the one we just looked at. Then we also have Iron Talons, increases the physical damage you deal by 8%. Sharpened Fang, increases the damage dealt by Mongoose Bite by 10%. My Beloved Monster, increases the Crit Strike chance of Flanking Strike by 10%. Bird of Prey, Raptor Strike, heals you for 10% of the damage it deals. Embrace of the Aspects, reduces the cooldown of your Aspects by 20%. Fluffy Go, increases the pet's haste by 15%. Hunter's Bounty reduces the remaining cooldown on exhilaration by 15 seconds each time you kill an enemy. Lacerating Talons increases damage dealt by Lacerate by 10%. Hunter's Gill, Guile, Gill, same thing, reduces the cooldown of your traps by 20%. Explosive Force increases explosive trap damage by 10%. Raptor's Cry increases the damage dealt by Raptor Strike by 15%. Terms of Engagement, the remaining cooldown of Harpoon is reset when you kill an enemy. And finally, Hellcarver, Carve deals 10% additional damage for each target hit. Nice! Some really nice passives there, all pretty much just increasing your damage. Then we have our special ones. Aspect of the Skylord. Aspect of the Eagle, that's our big cooldown, remember, increases all damage you deal by 30% for its duration, as if it wasn't strong enough already. Then we also have Eagle's Bite. Harpoon applies on the trail, a unique damage over time effect that deals damage over time, and your melee auto attacks extend its duration by 6 seconds. So let's show you that quickly. We can go to the one over here. We've got Harpoon and it applies the bleed effect, and you can see with every melee attack, the duration just goes up and up and up. Basically, if you continually 
hit the target that you harpoon to, you've got a free damage over time effect as long as you can hit it. If you can't, or if you go out of range for an extended period of time, you need to make sure you harpoon back in to reapply that bleed effect. And if we have more than one target, I can see how this is going to get quite fun, having to jump out to harpoon the second target and then swapping targets just to make sure that auto attack is extending that duration and keeping them up. I think two targets would probably be the limit there, unless you were just on point with pretty much everything about playing Survival Hunter. And then we also have Talon Strike. Your basic attacks have a chance to trigger two rapid additional blows, which seems to not really proc all that often and doesn't deal a lot of damage. Not last time I looked at a damage meter anyway, so that's a little disappointing. So I said we'd look at how Survival Hunter is playing right now. We've got Web the Mocknathal, Snake Hunter, Post Haste, Improved Traps, Camouflage, Serpent Sting, and Expert Trapper. The deal here is to keep everything up and everything on cooldown until you get to your Mongoose Bite window where you're going to want to basically make the most of it. That means getting as many charges of Mongoose Fury and then using your Fury of the Eagle while maintaining your two cooldowns to kind of benefit them. So these two, Snake Hunter and Aspect of the Eagle, are going to come every second Fury of the Eagle. So we're going to have one window where we can't really do much about it and then every other window is going to be a huge nuke fest. So to start with, we obviously want to get that harpoon dot rolling, we want to get lacerate going, as well as explosive trap, we need four stacks of the raptor strike buff from where the mock methal, and then we need to go crazy with everything at the start, and then basically repeat it. So we'll go into harpoon, with lacerate, explosive trap, get those four stacks, Make sure to keep everything up at the same time. We'll go Eagle and then start using the Mongoose Bites while keeping the trap up. Keep an eye on how many Mongoose Bites you've got. Fear of the Eagle if you get too close to the duration running out and then just go from there. Sadly, we dropped pretty much everything. I'm not too great at this rotation just yet, but you kind of get the gist of it. Keep everything up, including that damnably annoying four stack and then mongoose bite when you have them keep a lacerate up keep your trap up we're going to drop that buff again not quite and then just rotate it and rotate it we also want to use flanking strike when we are going to focus gap so that's really the only time we can throw that in when we got the spare focus because we need to spend all that extra focus on maintaining that raptor strike buff and making sure lacerate goes up as soon as it comes off so Right now, it is actually quite complicated. You have a few things to look out for. You have quite a lot to manage, and you are rewarded quite well with high DPS. I mean, we've got 130k there. I know while focusing on it, I've managed to get up to 150 and, and keep it there, and that's with the PvP character, which doesn't have ideal stats and doesn't have really anything in its artifact. That's still the base 750. There's no relics in there, and... You know, it's just not an ideal setup, but we're still getting quite a good amount of DPS. So I'm looking forward to Survival Hunter. Hopefully, it's going to be worthwhile, and hopefully they'll be worth taking into raids. I mean, if not, then we can have to just swap over to Marksman and play that as it is, even if it's quite clunky. But that's it for this video. That's it for Survival Hunter coming 7.0 and Legion. It does look a little better than what a lot of people are saying and what I have been saying in the past. So I'm actually relatively excited actually to get to playing Survival Hunter on live. It's going to be fun to take it through Hellfire Citadel again and see just how it's shaping up and how it's comparing to everybody else. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions or queries please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. Apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun and as always I will see you next time. So I said I'd say something about why things have been so hectic recently at the end of the video, and this is it. So if you stuck around, thanks. Obviously this isn't going to be for everybody, this is more the personal side of things, it's more Richard instead of Kalani, so... But I can happily say that in the previous month, 
my beautiful girlfriend has become my beautiful wife. We managed to get married start to finish in pretty much four weeks, so everything was very rushed, very hectic, very crazy, and I hope you can understand why my focus hasn't necessarily been on throwing a few videos out up on the channel, although we did get some out there, we've got some nice ones out there, and hopefully we can continue doing that at a faster pace. Let's hopefully get a few more going into Legion, and then past that, who knows, but that's the reason why I've been a little absent on the channel. I hope you can forgive me and, you know, hey, I might even throw something up to do with all of that jazz. You know, maybe something to do with the wedding and some photos. I don't know if you guys are interested. Leave it down in the comment section below. I'd be happy to do something like that. But this is me signing off for realsies this time, so you know, I'll catch you later, guys.